to get closer to the mic. Yeah. Here, Bring, it Bring it closer to you. How's this? There it is. Okay. Okay. So, um, yeah, uh, I was just uh, talking to Rustin, and, and he agreed. I don't think there's been a public poetry reading in Fairfield since COVID. So this is the first, and I think we're. I'll, I'll start with the poetry, uh, so I won't take up any time. Uh, we're starting with, let's see, was, um, Bill Grazer, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, Bill Grazer, uh, for those who don't know him, I think everybody does. He's a performance poet, reciting most of his work from memory. He's been published in the North American Review, Delco and the Lyrical Iowa, and Long Island Quarterly. He's also the winner of Iowa Poetry Association's 2012 Norman Thomas Memorial Award, and the author of Fire in a Nutshell and a new book, Rushing is a Waste of Time. <laughs> so uh, uh, give Bill a welcome and uh, we'll start. Zoom readings in the last years, and this is the first time face to face with the audience. And though on, on the computer, you know, there are all these little boxes with people, and one person is from Ohio, the other is from Texas, so that's kind of cool. But it's nice to see you and to be with you tonight and share some poems. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. I can hear you too. We'll start with a poem called <coughs> Understanding Poetry. With a book on the podium, the poet looks down as if up at the stars. As poems are read, some stay seated. Others lay on their backs amid grass that grows around them. Clouds blow in from the east, lightning flashes, thunder roars, and it pours. Those who are seated don't seem to notice. Others take cover beneath the chairs, puddles form, frogs <coughs> leap about. When it can rain no more, clouds scurry off and the moon comes out like a flashlight in God's hand, who comes to see if we're okay. After the reading, some leave much the way they came. Others are drenched, have bits of grass in their hair, and eyes big as buckets filled with rain, reflecting the light of the moon. This is a playful poem called The Time of Poet Tycoons. <laughs> In the time of poet tycoons, poets are billionaires. As poems are read to heat our houses, to sweeten our tea, and read before bed to make pleasant our dreams. Fishermen find that when reciting poems, fish jump into their boats. And farmers recite poems in fields to bring the rain, and then other poems that the sun bloom forth again. Poets intrigued with politics run for president, some sounding long poetic speeches. Others make do with haiku. 
Poems are read by old men in barbershops, by women on the phone when they need talk to a friend, by children in the playground, though the bully pushing others aside may not give up his turn. And at the zoo, a girl reads a poem to a liar, who pressing his muzzle against the bars, licks her hand. This poem won first honorable mention in the Lyrical Iowa this year. It's called Bags. Tote bags, tea bags, school, tool, and duffel bags, sleeping bags, saddle bags, picturesque camera bags, needing to be laundered, laundry bags, sandbags, handbags, body bags, burlap, ziplock, and bowling bags, bags under our eyes, keep our eyes on our bags. Though we think it's in the bag, the cat is already out of the bag. He took his foot off the bag, and now they are searching our bags. Air bags, water bags, bean bags, lost bags. Let me help you with your bags. And as that's enough to fill the bag, we end by falling through the hole in the bottom of the bag. <laughs> In cinema, they often do remake of movies. This, this is a remake of a poem <laughs> called The Red Hand Truck. So much depends upon the red hand truck, scratched yet sturdy beside the heavy boxes. <laughs> so, so who wrote who wrote the original? Yeah, no, William Carlos Williams. Yes. Yeah. The red wheelbarrow. No more trivia. <laughs> this is called Grandma's Pineapple Upside Down Cake. I wish I had some to share with you. Yeah. But. Some things will never be beat. Some things will never be topped. Like Mount Everest, the Beatles, Marilyn Monroe, and for many, their grandmother's cooking. My favorite was her pineapple upside down cake. Baked in a frying pan, she used for nothing else. There are moments when the noise of the world stops, as when standing on the summit of Mount Everest, when making love, and when eating pineapple, ablaze with brown sugar and scrumptious cake. And I am hit with the frying pan of perfection. And though my mouth is full, I sing. Lucy in the sky with pineapple. Oh. <laughs> I listen to NPR and fresh air. Fresh air is Who's the woman on Fresh Air? Terry, Terry. Terry Gross. And she was interviewing this author. I don't know his name. And he had written an essay about the burning of the whales. And that phrase hit me. The burning of the whales. And these whales were beached and died. And what to do with, you know, how do you bury a whale? So, 
the burning of the whales. Fire never seems to mind if it's the curl of a candle wick or a bed with baby sleeping. So it was with the whales beached in Oregon and they're not knowing what else to do with the corpses. If we were but fire, we wouldn't mind either. But we are also water, even one drop of which forms a tear. Those on the beach that day lit the match and beheld the flame in fiery, fiery winds rise. They will never forget the trembling of the sea in their chest. So maybe Suzanne mentioned we're going to read 10 minutes and then 10 minutes and 10 minutes and swing around and each read 10 minutes again. So this is my last poem of the first segment. And it comes from another experience uh, driving through Kelowna and some of the Amish horses. You can't tell by the way they dress. Uh, I assume they were Amish horses. <laughs> and the one horse and I exchanged glances. And that animal was so at home in who it was. That's what I thought. And I thought it must be a female because it seemed to look to see if I was all right. So this is called Opening the Gate. Glancing into the eyes of an Amish horse, it becomes clear that the next time I need talk to open the gate and let my words run, I will come, carrot in hand, to where this furry soul bows her head amid the glorious grass.